Good morning, everybody. So I was finally able to get down to my buddy's store in Frederick, Maryland, Edgeworks, where he had a microscope. Uh, I very much wanted to get some better eyes on some of these parts before I talked about what I was seeing here. So now that we have some good observations, I have a high level of probability of what is occurring based on observations. Now it's just going to come down to some lab findings to confirm compositionally what's actually occurring in this steel. So based on my observations, I need to explain again the, uh, the rolling process and how these materials start their life to talk about some of this. So uh, first off here, I, I did understand the feedback. This has fallen on the floor a few times, but uh, this is good for one last presentation here. So this time I did it in uh, markers so you guys could see it better. So the PM ingot starts off as a larger bar and what ends up being sheets are cut off in chunks. Uh, you can see this in a Niagara Specialty Metals tour video I did a bunch of years ago, if you go way down on our YouTube. So uh, this is cut off here into a chunk, and what I believe is occurring is there's some sort of anomalous pockets going on inside the bar, and for a while they roll this in two directions, but then towards uh, the end of rolling, they roll it all in one direction. Uh, the bakers and people that work with dough and stuff out there, you're gonna understand what's happening here. Um, so as you start rolling this, uh, I believe what these anomalies are become elongated as you're rolling in this one direction. So they end up being the football shapes that I've been seeing in parts. Uh, if you go to my uh, giant CPM voids video, um, you can see these void pockets that I'm running into on our Blanchard grinders or getting through the material. So how these manifest is gonna depend on how you cut your parts out of the sheet. But what I think is occurring in here is you have these long stringers of voids inside these sheets. And then, you know, with the 5.1s we cut in this orientation because it was the most efficient nest. So they're coming across the parts um, in a perpendicular way to the uh, length of the part. So uh, now that I've explained that, um, we can look at what we're seeing here. So based on my observations, I believe what is occurring is something analogous to this that I drew out on this GSO-10. So, uh, you know, early on in processing, I had parts delaminate where I believe, you know, run into a pocket similar there. And on the Blanchard grinder, I've been seeing some of this, but then as I cut down through, as we grind, we're running into things like this. And at different intersections, uh, some of this will be hidden and then it breaks through and then gets ground away. So uh, that's what I think is going on at these different depths and intersections where sometimes then this shows up like that, where it just broke through. So what was on the other side of that is now gone, but then we still have some of that anomaly within the part. So we're gonna get these out. They're gonna cut them apart and grind and polish it and have a really good look at it uh, with some fancy tech equipment. But uh, based on my observations, I'm. I have a high level of confidence in what is occurring. So now we just need to figure out what that is. Uh, so again, I, I don't believe there's anything in my processes that are actually causing this based on all of these different observations and data points, but I don't know what it is because I don't have the appropriate lab equipment. So from here, we're gonna take our juiciest samples at multiple steps of the production process and send those off to the science guys. And once they come to some determinations, we'll swing back around and discuss what their interpretations are and what this might mean for these materials. So without any further ado, uh, we're gonna skip ahead to some of the initial uh, findings here that we were looking at with this sweet little microscope. So again, thanks, Sean, for uh, lending this to me. I always like to lean on observation and data over assumptions. Um, an opinion. I, I don't like operating that way and uh, I get pretty motivated if I feel like I'm being lied to. So uh, yeah, let's go check out the footage. All right, so we're down here doing a little investigative work here ahead of sending these samples out for the full evaluation under an SEM, but already you can see that large whatever that is uh, under this blade here and uh, this is what it looks like in person. So that's that sample. So we're gonna find out real soon what that is. All right, so we're looking at another part here. Check that out. So that's down on the bevel there. We just cut into one of those little void pockets that I was showing on the uh, Blanchard grinder there before. So 
as I finished up the part here that just took away some of the loose material and revealed that uh, little deficiency there in the part. But you, again, you can see this here as we pull this out. Uh, that's just one of those, that's what we're looking at.